I'm Zachary Cowan, the author of the Study Daily Books, and thanks for joining me for a study of Moses chapter 7, part 2. So today, these verses that we're going to study, they're absolutely essential if you want to compare and contrast Satan versus God and how they treat wickedness and how they view it. After Zion had become such a holy city that it was even taken up into heaven, well, there's not many good people left on the earth. And those who are good, when they are taught the gospel, they are also taken up into heaven. That's what we learned today. So just because Zion's taken up, it doesn't mean more people aren't taken up later. They're translated and brought up as well. Meaning that Satan has his run of the whole earth for a period of time. And in verse 26, it describes that when he looks down on the power that he's having and the influence he's having on people's life to create misery, he laughs and he rejoices in it. Meanwhile, God sends angels. And in verse 28, God begins to weep. And Enoch, seeing God weep, in verses 28 through 31, he, per he asks him, like, how are you weeping? You're God. You're the greatest. Verse 30, you've created millions of worlds, and you can create, continue to create worlds without number. You're the greatest of all, and you're righteous. How are you weeping? How are you doing that? And in response, in verses 32 through 40, God, in this great moment of vulnerability, teaches us about why he weeps when his children do wrong and act wickedly. So go ahead, pause your video, and see what you can learn about the weeping God in verses 32 through 40. Hey, thanks for studying and learning about our God who weeps. This is interesting because God is being very vulnerable here, and he's saying, look, as much as I can impact your life, you impact my life. And how we choose to live impacts how he feels and what he experiences that he has sent us here to learn to love each other and when we respond with hatred for whatever reason it creates sadness in our god it creates hardship because he he understands the pain and the suffering we have to go through and if we don't repent he even prepares a hell for us a, a place in spirit prison by which a person might go and if they repent there, then the atonement can have effect upon them. All of this he has done, that he might bring us back. His whole goal is not for us to just worship him and to tell him how great he is, but for us to change our very nature so that we can change the lives around us and have a mighty impact for good. This is the God we have. I hope that seeing God in this vulnerable state increases your faith, your love, and your devotion to him. That as you go forth today, you will think, what am I going to do that can make God rejoice more, weep less? And what can I do today that will make Satan uh, mourn and laugh less? They are two great people. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are committed to our salvation. Satan is committed to our misery. Let's give our time and attention to the one who weeps over us. Elder Holland has said, surely God matches with his own the, cheer, the tears his children shed. Let's give him reason to rejoice today. Thanks for studying. See you next time.